Good afternoon and welcome to today's session on design thinking to solve 13 serious SME IT problems. I am Prasanna, co-host of the event today. Let me introduce today's presenter, Mr. Vishal Shah, CEO and co-founder of Sinosoft Technologies. He is seasoned as seasoned technology stalwart, an inventor of specific patented technologies, a writer, a serial entrepreneur, an investor, and importantly, a go-to guy for MSMEs. We also have Mr. Sudhir Chaube, co-founder of Sinosoft in the panel. He oversees all commercial matters of the organization. The aim of the webinar is to help Indian SMEs in overcoming obstacles posed by the adoption of information technology. As a part of this program, the company has curated a list of webinars to help SMEs turn the tide of the pandemic and grow their business. In today's session, Vishal Shah will narrate 13 serious problems faced by most SMEs. He will present a unique design thinking approach on how to solve them. This will also include live demonstration of the effective solutions. If you have any questions while you watch this demonstration, kindly write in question and answer tab in the bottom of your Zoom login. The panel will take up the question at the end of the session. Alternatively, in case you have any question in the end of the session you want to ask, you may raise your hand and we shall activate your microphone to ask the question. Vishal sir, can you please take it ahead from here? Good afternoon all. So just two weeks, just one week, I would say, since we met last time on lean and mean IT systems, I see many uh, people who are the same people who attended last one. So today we are uh, coming up with a very unique uh, topic. We have identified 13 serious problems which are mostly faced by SMEs. And these are derived by my interaction with SME owners. And I could read what bothers them the most. And that is how these 13 serious SME IT problems are actually identified. Today, we are going to have a different approach. We are going to have an approach of design thinking. Let's say we come across any problem. Our brain starts finding the solution of that problem in a typical and particular manner. And it is documented as design thinking. You know, how we think about solving some problem step by step, and then we find the solution or we find multiple solutions and then we select the best possible solution. So design thinking is itself, is, is a subject in itself. So we will try to apply design thinking concepts and find out the solutions to these 13 serious SME IT problems. So we will start with this. Uh, this webinar might get extended because we are going to talk about 13 problems, 13 solutions, and then we are going to demonstrate those solutions. So this might go beyond the scheduled time. So before we start the agenda of these 13 serious problems, uh, let me have a pretty good idea on composition of all the attendees, what kind of roles and responsibilities they are um, fulfilling in their organization. So kindly answer this poll on the screen so I can relate this further slides accordingly. So as we see the results on the screen, 9% of the attendees are SME owners, 
65 percent of the attendees are IT professionals in different IT related roles in the organizations and 26 percent are IT consultants or vendors or system integrators. Today we are going to discuss these 13 serious problems. Most of the times I will express the dilemma of an IT professional or an IT consultant or a system integrator when they are dealing with MSMEs. See MSMEs understand the problem very well. And our IT industry, which is represented by IT professionals, IT consultants, system integrators, can also give the solutions. But sometimes the solutions which are available and which we give to the SME, either they find it complex or they find it expensive. And that is where the biggest challenge is. So today, because most of our attendees, approximately 81% of our attendees are IT professionals, IT consultants, system integrators, we will also keep this criteria of cost or affordability in our design thinking approach. So we will find out the solutions and these solutions will have to be necessarily simple, and cost effective and we will take care of that. So now let us understand these 13 problems. So let me first list those 13 problems. So by my interaction with multiple SME owners, I have summarized that these 13 things bother them the most. I will explain everything in detail. Let me first read out. It is data scatteredness. It is intentional deletion of data. It is ransomware attack, disaster or hardware failure, laptop loss, data theft over USB, data theft over email attachment, data theft over internet, how to give remote application access to the users who are remotely working, what to do in BYOD environment where users are working on their own personal device or computer, how to make sure that work from home is convenient, smooth and secured, how to monitor the productivity of a remote user and how to design an organization wide IT policy and enforce it. It is very easy. It sounds very easy for a large enterprise, which is having uh, IT resources, good budgets, but for SME, it is always a challenge. So these are the 13 problems we have identified. And today we are going to um, apply the design thinking approach to solve them. And then we'll see what is the solution and we'll keep in mind that this solution has to be simple and affordable. So I request Prasanna to run the poll. I would like to know which are the problems from this list you think to your SME clients bother the most. If you could just answer this poll, please. So the results are there on the screen. 42% of the attendees 
consider data scatteredness as a serious problem. 42% data loss due to intentional data deletion as a serious problem. 46% um, consider it uh, a ransomware attack as a serious problem. Loss of laptop and hardware failure. 50% of the people think that it is a serious problem. 50% of the people think USB uh, misused for data theft is a serious problem. 54% uh, believe that email misused for data theft is a serious problem. 42% uh, believe that data theft over internet is a serious problem. 50% believe that work from home is a challenge. 33% uh, believe that BYOD is a challenge and 38% believe that complexity of integrating and uh, managing too many software hardware solutions is also a challenge for SMEs. It is all about SME perspective. Okay, so now we will start our design thinking exercise and we will start with understanding of the problem. We will understand what are the traditional solutions to those problems. We'll understand what are the shortcomings of those traditional solutions. Then we'll understand what are the consequences of these problems. And then we will derive a solution which is affordable and effective. So going to the next slide now. So first problem is data scatteredness. First problem is data scatteredness. So before I explain this problem, let me uh, remind you a story which we have read in our childhood. There was a king who announced that everyone living in his village has to visit his palace with a glass of milk and pour that glass of the milk in a small pool built in his palace in the night time. Everyone visited and poured something in the pool. In the morning, people realized that that pool was full of water. It was not full of milk. Everybody thought that what if I pour water because anyway others are pouring milk so nobody would know and everybody thought the same way and that is the reason it was an unpleasant surprise in the morning that the pool was full with water. Same thing happens here. When we want to centralize the data you know, scatteredness of the data leads to data duplication, leads to low confidence backup. If your data is scattered on 25 different computers, you cannot manage to take backup of 25 computers. So low confidence backup is also consequences of data scatteredness. Also, organizations invest in storage equipment. And if users do not store their data on the storage equipment, then the investment in the storage equipment is also underutilized. Traditionally, we put a file server or a NAS device so that users save the data or store the data on that central storage location, and then they can collaborate. We do that with an intention that if we have to take the backup, we have to take the backup of only that particular device. We don't have to worry about the backup of individual 25, 50, 100 devices. But when we instruct all the users to save the data in that central storage, it is very, very democratic thing. Users might follow the instructions. Users might not follow the instructions, same as Everybody was supposed to pour milk in that pool. Everybody is supposed to save data on the central storage, but people did not do it thinking that if I don't do it, others are anyway going to do it, nobody would know. Similarly, the user may keep the data on his or her device and do not utilize the central storage. This is a very common problem in MSME. So what could be the design thinking approach to this particular solution, to this particular problem? So the problem here is the democracy. The problem here is the discretion of the user to decide where he is going to save the data. 
the problem is the organization has to advise or organization has to instruct the user organization cannot mandate it because organization does not have a capability to make it forceful so i would term it as democratic centralization where user by their own will and desire would either save the data on the central storage or would not save the data on the central storage and our design thinking our r and d teams design thinking you know believe that if we can implement autocratic centralization then users are not left with the choice where they will save the data and data will be definitely stored on central storage it will utilize the full investment in the central storage it will avoid duplication of data because now data is not scattered and the confidence level of the data backup would be very high because now we know that all the data is in the central location and we have to only take the backup so there are ways to achieve this particular thing and one way is to put a domain controller to put an active directory to make the policies such that users are not able to save data on the local computers but this is not possible to implement on remote users also as i told our design thinking solution has to be affordable and simple smes for them having a domain controller having an active directory and then having somebody to create the domain and manage it is complex microsoft license cost is significant not only that they also charge client access license if they are using domain controller it is also significant so what could be the solution so the solution is the force centralization by device hardening the concept of device hardening there are multiple products for device hardening which will harden the device of the user and will not allow the user to save the data on local computers so you can implement device hardening solutions to achieve this black box our product is also one of the device hardening solution and we will see how it achieves so i request my technical team to connect to a user's computer and we will show how device hardening can happen so now we are connecting to a computer system of a user and we will see how device hardening happens so device hardening happens by withdrawing admin rights from the users so let's understand whether uh, black box uh, agent is installed or not so black box device hardening agent is installed over here yes uh, user does not have admin rights so user cannot change any settings on this computer it is not now let us see what kind of data user has access to please click on my this pc here so now if you see here you don't see c drive d drive nothing now this particular computer system is hardened user does not have access to c drive d drive but user has access to all the computer or softwares installed on this particular device and the user is forced to save the data on the network drive only and these network drives are from black box it could be from any file server so now we will try to create a file and try to save the data on different locations on this particular computers so just create one notepad file try to save it on desktop you can't try to save it on documents you can't try to save it on downloads you can't now try to save it on network folders you are able to save the data so this is called device hardening this is called autocratic centralization this user is not left with the choice where he will save the data he has to save the data at the central location and that is what we mean by autocratic centralization now we will move to the next part which is deletion of the data yeah rajendra allow me to share the screen please so this is something very important intentional deletion of the data many a times i 
interact with SME owners and they say that some users just to disrupt the operations, delete the data from the network. And because data is deleted from the network, it is difficult to find out who has deleted it because so many users work on that network data. So how to solve that problem? So there are technologies on the network where they're called as active recycle beans. You know, they're not the same recycle beans of Windows, active recycle bin, which can be there on your network device. So whenever the data is deleted from the network, now you know that all your data is stored on the network. Whenever the data is deleted from the network, it logs who has deleted that data. And it will also store it somewhere so that in case it is needed to be restored, one can easily restore it. So now we will do one thing. We will, re we will delete the data and we'll find out how we can find out who has deleted the data. Yeah, Rajendra, can you go to account executive again, that desktop, please? So now on this particular computer system, there are so many files which are shared by the users. These are network drives. Now let's say this user shift deletes all the data, shift plus delete. So it will be permanently deleted and it will be deleted from the network drive, just click. Yeah, it is deleted. Now, if it is intentionally deleted, some other user would approach the management or the IT team that somebody has deleted the data. Now, who is that somebody is very important because if it is intentional, one needs to know. So such active recycle beans will preserve the deleted data as well as it will tell us who has deleted the data. Black box is also, device of the black box is also equipped with such technology and we will see how it works otherwise you can use any active recycle bin of your choice can we go to uh, the console of the black box to find out who has deleted the data so now we are loaded with black box console. We recently deleted some data. Go to the file logs. Now this reactive recycle bean has logged everything. What has happened today? So let us please log, please find out the path. We want to find out who has deleted that uh, data from department accounts. So if you see here at 3.24 today, just two minutes ago, account executive user deleted so many files, around 31 files it, he deleted. You can export it for some uh, legal actions as well as you can find out at what time it was deleted. So if somebody has intentionally deleted it, you do, you do have a evidence and you can take the actions. So this is about active recycle bin. Of course, active recycle bin can also give the data back to you. Yeah, Rajendra, we'll move to the third point. Now the third point is about ransomware attack. Now, we understand that by keeping firewall and by keeping antivirus, we are okay and we are protected from ransomware. But there is always a zero day. On zero day, a new ransomware is discovered, is launched, and it is not included in the definitions used by the firewalls or antiviruses. By the time these firewall software or antivirus software understand the modus operandi of these ransomware and update their definition, most of the times ransomware would do its damage. And that is called zero day. So most of us SMEs believe that they have firewall, they have antivirus, so they're 
they are protected. But when there is a zero day, there is a chance that they might lose the data and they cannot recover. So they need a plan B whereby they can recover the data even after ransomware attack. And for that purpose, the versioning technology is the game changer. Versioning technology and bit locking technology is the game changer. So design thinking is that we first segregate the total data in two different categories. One category is the data, which is a past data, which is referred by the user, but not modified by the user. Another type of data is the data on which users work regularly. So we need some background service technology, which can segregate this data, let's say every 24 hours. And after that segregation of the data, Bit locking happens on referred and not modified data and versioning is applied on frequently modified data. So now you have two types of data, data type A, data type B. Data type A is bit locked because it is not modified, it is only referred and data type B is not bit locked because users are working. You cannot make it bit locked. Users are working at that time, every 24 hours, we take a version of that data. Now imagine there is a zero day and ransomware has struck. If ransomware has struck, it will not be able to affect the bit locked data because ransomware cannot change it because it is bit locked. At the same time, ransomware can affect the frequently modified data, not, not to worry. We know that we have yesterday's version of frequently modified data. So at the most, we will lose the data between the time we version the data and at the time ransomware attacked us. So minimum data loss, maximum business continuity. So this is a design thinking approach to Traditional solutions, you know, firewall, antivirus, they are good to have. But plan B, when we want to recover the data, after the ransomware attack was successful, we should be confident about it. So this is about the ransomware attack and data recovery design thinking. We'll move to the fourth point, which is disaster, hardware failure kind of thing, you know. Most of the times SMEs have tele server, ERP server and whatnot on premise. They take the backup of those servers or those file servers somewhere in the same premise only. Either on a NAS device or on a hard disk or on a USB hard disk, whatever. Many a times if disaster happens or hardware fails, that could be the hardware or media of the device on which the backup has happened, they just lose the data. And then they have to go through a very painful process of data recovery. And many a times a four terabyte hard disk takes 15 days to recover the data. So it is a clear cut problem. If there's a disaster, sometimes organization cannot continue the business because all the data is lost because that hardware is destroyed. Similarly, Fifth problem is laptop loss. Sometimes a quitting employee does not provide the laptop or when he provides the laptop, he formats the laptop or the laptop is genuinely lost or stolen. In that case also, most of the times in SMEs, laptops are not regularly backed up. Laptop users are the busiest users in SME. They have time for all business development or technical things they do, but they have minimum time for taking the backup, sit back and take the backup. So it has to be automatic. So the design thinking has to be like, the backup of the servers has to be off the premise somewhere outside the organization. It should be compressed so that it does not use much of the bandwidth. And it should be encrypted. So in case somebody breaks into the cloud or data center where the backup is kept, that backup cannot be decrypted and they do not have any data breach. Similarly, 
for laptop users whenever they are online over internet there should be some lightweight agent which should take the backup and push it on the cloud now the problem here is another problem is that on that laptop there is a 1 terabyte hard disk what backup you will take so a specific folder should be backed up now the question is in the design thinking approach what if user does not save data in that specific folder on the laptop then the answer is that we have to apply force centralization locally on the laptop so that user is forced to work on a specific folder in the laptop only nowhere else so now the design thinking shapes it like this for servers there should be a lightweight agent which compresses the data which sends the data in encrypted format on the cloud for laptop first that this particular agent should harden the laptop such that user can save the data only in specific folder in the laptop or specific drive in the laptop and then that particular folder only whatever data is there in that particular folder is pushed after compressing and encrypting to the cloud and the status of the backup should be informed to either the owner or to the it professional who is managing the show so that if there is any discrepancy in the backup they proactively correct it and they don't end up in the situation where data is lost because data was not backed up because of some error and they were not knowing about it they were under the impression that everything was fine so now we will understand this particular thing you know so you need to identify a cloud backup agent which can compress and encrypt the data you need to identify a device hardening agent so that the laptop user can work in a specific folder black box agent is also a device hardening agent we will show how it works yeah we can can you go to the laptop uh, configured for this particular purpose so now we are connecting to a laptop let us verify whether it is hardened by black box agent or not yes it is black box agent is there let us see whether he is the admin of the system or not go to control panel he is not so laptop user cannot uh, uh, make any changes in the setting now go to this pc see if you see here you don't see c drive d drive e drive of the laptop you are seeing some folder called professional.am which is lying on the laptop's hard drive only and the user is not allowed to save data anywhere else other than this particular folder so this is solving first problem that we don't have to take the backup of entire laptop we have to take the backup of this folder only nothing else so this is device hardening of the laptop now this particular agent will also take the backup of the laptop as well as of the server the same thing could be on the server on which you don't have to force centralize it because no user uses the server and push it on the cloud and then we have to we have to be updated with the report or the status of the backup so we will see how it how we can see the status so i will uh, take over the screen now so this is a dashboard so if we have let's say 20 laptops we should know what is happening to that laptop or if we have five servers or two servers we should know what is happening to that server so we'll log into the dashboard
So now you see here on the screen, you will find all the laptops and their status. So this is obviously chop their laptop backup happened on 23rd successful. We can see some other laptops also. So we can see this laptop. The backup happened one hour and 14 minutes ago. 61.12 data was KB was transmitted. It was compressed to 61.12 KB. And we can see it here, 2211.91 KB of the data was changed. Total data stored is 4.6 GB. And if there is any error, we can also find out that error. Similarly, we can see the status of the backup of our servers. So let's say if it is a server, let's say we want to see this report. So there was an error in the backup, MS SQL database. So we know that this is an error and we can, we can rectify the error. We'll see some other successful backup now. And this should be notified to us by email also. So here 494 MB of the data was backed up, 323 files were backed up and backup was complete. So this is how we can identify uh, whether backup happened or not and what was the status of the backup. So now we'll move to the next problem. I'll share my screen again. It is data theft over USB. So now, um, normally what we do is we control the USB through Active Directory or through BIOS, but it does not solve the problem. Most of the times what happens is the user sometimes genuinely needs USB, like digital signatures. Account team requires digital signature to upload the returns and everything. Sometimes design team requires USB access because fabricator or vendor is sending drawings or designs by pen drive. Or maybe sometimes uh, the users require USB because they are photographing the sites and then uh, they are uh, copying those photographs to the network. So what to do in that? So here you have three options. You need to have three options basically. First, Majority of the users won't require to access USB, but they require USB access for keyboard, mouse, kind of non mass storage device. Second use case is about the users who want to use USB port, but only invert to invert the data. It means vendor has sent a drawing, they just have to invert. They should not be able to outward the data because if we are not able to outward the data, we are sure that data leakage or theft cannot happen. And the third use case is some genuine users who wants to copy the data on USB because management wants them to. At the same time, we want to make sure that what they are doing should be logged and reported. So all these three things should be there in the solution instead of just disabling the USB or enabling the USB. So we'll see how it works. On black box, there are multiple solutions. You can have a good endpoint controller and have this kind of solution. Of course, report part is not available in most of the solutions, but report is also necessary because when you entrust someone to use USB for outwarding your data, you would like to make sure that he does not misuse that authority. So we will see that now. Yeah, can we go to the console of the black box? Yeah, go to USB part, please. So in USB part, you have multiple options. Like if you want to read only you want to, you don't want to give any USB except a keyboard mouse. You can keep this both the selections as block. In case you want only invert, then you can keep this as a read. Just do it here only. Allow and block. So you can only read the data from USB. You cannot write anything to the USB. And there can be a use case where you want to allow that user to write something on USB also. Yes, it is possible. You can report to an email ID. You can configure an email ID on which the activity will be reported. 
of the USB. So three layer, one, no USB except keyboard mouse type of mass uh, storage, non-mass storage device, two, inward only, three, report reported usage. So this is the design thinking, you know, you cannot just disable or enable USB. So this is one of the options. Now we will look at the third problem, which is email problem. You know, users can misuse emails to leak the data. Today, my, today is my last day and I send all the uh, sensitive information by email. Most of the email systems we use lack vigilance policy. They don't have activity reports. They don't have any control on blind carbon copy. And they don't have reliable email backup solution. We are dependent on PST type of backups. There should, not, there should be something better because PST or such email clients are prone to corruption. So the design thinking says that it should have vigilance policy, it should have good activity reports, it should have control on the blind carbon copy, and it should have reliable email backup solution. We'll see this. We'll also look at the another part, which is data theft over internet. Now, this is very important. We'll see the email part also briefly, and we'll see the this one also. This is very important. See, many a times organizations put a firewall and then they block certain category of the websites. Many a times users who are in the job of business development or R&D, they cannot do away with this particular filters. You know, they don't know what they want to see and they cannot be restricted on their email browsing rights because they are doing research, because they are doing business development. In that case, they require unrestricted internet access. In that, situation management is reluctant or IT uh, person is reluctant with a view that if internet is given in unrestricted manner, they can be unproductive. And more importantly, they can leak the data on various internet places. So what to do? So the design thinking suggests that there should be this level one, there should be minimum required website list. Okay, I'm an account guy. I need to have access to HDFC bank website. I need to have access to GST, whatever, whatever, whatever. So for every user, such a minimum required website list can be prepared. And then there should be on-demand unrestricted internet. So now as a user, if I want to do my job, but the website which I want to see is not part of the list of my minimum required websites, I should have option to have on-demand internet. And when I switch to on-demand internet, the isolation of the data should happen so that I cannot pick up the data and push it on internet, but at the same time, I can do whatever research I want to do or I, whatever business development I want to do. I can download whatever I want to so that I can use it along with my data. So this is the design thinking. Instead of blocking the category, allow minimum required website and give on-demand internet option to the user. And when user switches to on-demand internet, make sure that your data is unavailable. This is very simple. Most of you are IT professionals, so you can do it also. We have automated it in our black box and we'll show you that. So first we'll see briefly the email part and then we'll see the internet part. Yeah, can we go to the uh, um, first, uh, the console part? Yeah, so in email, you see here, uh, when emails are routed through black box, you can use any mail distribution system here, not necessary, you should use black box. When emails are routed through such mail distribution system, instead of allowing user directly connecting to your email host, there will be in between there is a mail distribution system. So that will connect to your mail host, fetch the emails and distribute it to the users after applying vigilance policy. So this is the solution to this serious problem. What vigilance could be like in black box, you have incoming, outgoing, or both kind of email vigilance. You can have email whitelist, you can have email blacklist, 
users can send emails internally only or they can send emails to anybody or they can send emails to a comma separated list or they cannot send emails to comma separated list they can do bcc they cannot do bcc in both the cases it will be reported they can do certain attachments they cannot do certain attachments so all these things can be very well inbuilt it could be black box it could be something else but you should have something in between your email host and the user which has a vigilance capability so that your email systems are not misused to leak the data of the organization now go to internet part how to define that minimum list so have a proxy server or allow the list in your firewall or have something at the end point level or have something at the end point level at the end point let a user is remotely working he is not part of your firewall network then what so end point should be able to control that internet and that end point should be updated with minimum required website means that end point will allow only those websites which are allowed in the central console so this is one way how you do it in black box so we have allowed these websites only we do not allow anything else so this is minimum required website then that end point should allow on demand internet so whether that user is on airport accessing wifi in hotel accessing wifi or home network no problem that end point will make sure that user can access only these websites and he cannot access uh, other than that and in case he has on demand uh, in case he has on demand internet requirement he can request it and then all internet will be accessible at that time data should be inaccessible so that there is no risk of data breach now we will look at how it works so we'll connect to a laptop user so let's say this is a laptop user who is installed with such a endpoint which has limited websites minimum required website list so let us see what access he has for the internet he is not in the firewall network he is outside okay he is using some personal internet he opens in hdfcbank.com it will open now open dropbox.com he will not be able to open it because it is not part of minimum required website hdfc bank was part of minimum required website now by some reason he requires to access google drive let's say customer has called in and told that i have uploaded something on google drive why don't you download it google drive is not in minimum required website list okay now what to do in that case user has access to the data and has has access to limited internet so we are safe but now the use case is this user wants to do research user wants to do some um, business development or support customer share the data to share the data what to do in that case he will go for on demand internet in black box we call it happy hours go to black box icon right click and happy hours it is on demand internet as soon as he connects happy hours session it is full internet access can we go to the internet access first so now he can access dropbox or whatever he wants it will open because now unrestricted internet is there now go to the yeah google drive will also open whatever he wants to open he will open now go to the data what data he has accessible to now see he does not have access to all those drives he has only access to downloads where he can only download the data he cannot do anything so he cannot pick up the data and push it so on demand internet he can access all internet do his work and disable or check out of on demand internet just check out of all the on demand turn off happy hours now go to 
the internet part. Now open dropbox.com. It will not open because now you are out of on-demand internet session. Now go to the website, sorry, uh, 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 PC, this PC, what data is accessible. All the drives are loaded along with the download folder. So whatever he has downloaded, he can use it. So this is design thinking. It is like a room which has two different doors. One door opens to internet, another door opens to data. When door to the data, or sorry, when door to the internet is open, door to the data is closed. And when door to the data is open, window to limited internet is open and uh, door to unlimited internet or unrestricted internet is closed. So this is the design thinking. This is the design thinking. Uh, somebody in the audience has asked a question that what if the user wants to share data to our customer or vendor? See, if that user is handling sensitive data, go to the email part, please. Go to the email part, I will show. If he wants to share the data, he will share it by email. And here, if that user is uh, accessing sensitive data, here in the email whitelist, we will write the email ID or the domain name of that particular vendor in the email whitelist here, comma separated list. This is the email whitelist. Here we'll write down the email IDs of uh, you know vendor and that user will be able to send email to that vendor or number of vendors he's handling and he will not be able to leak the data anywhere else. So it's a zero trust strategy. Zero trust strategy means you exercise maximum control so that you have to monitor minimum. Yeah, now coming back to our presentation. Remote application access. Now, when your users are working from home, remotely working, then how do you give your legacy application access, tally or some ERP you are using, which is hosted on premise? How will you do that? Either you put a terminal server or uh, you use it by team viewer, both of them. Terminal server is a good solution, but very expensive solution. TeamViewer is a free solution, very bandwidth incentive, and then intensive, and it does not have any security. The users can take away your data from your ERP. So the problems are hardware intensive, bandwidth intensive, lack of data security, and vulnerable to backdoor attack. ME admin, you know, was the one which was the victim of most of the backdoor attacks last year. So what kind of solution it should be by the design thinking? So it should be bandwidth frugal. It should be hardware light. It should be integrated data leakage prevention. It should have access through VPN and any device access should be there. So now coming to this particular uh, thing, you know, we are going to address two things, how the user is going to access the, how the user is going to access the application remotely and how the user is going to access the data of the central storage when he is offline. This is the question which is also asked in the chat that if, that if user is offline, how can he save the data online? So we'll see both the things. Yeah, can we go to the laptop login please? Just log into the laptop which is configured for this. So now this is a laptop user. Now, if you see here, um, he has access to local drive. So in case he's offline, he can work on his local drive. In case he's offline, he can work on his local drive. Now, let's say he wants to work, if he's a remote user and he wants to work on the central storage or collaborate some files with the central storage. I'm answering the question first, then we'll see the remote access of the application. So here, he can connect to the VPN. So you can use any VPN solution to map the folders. So here in black box, it is an inbuilt VPN server. It has inbuilt blind VPN. Connected. 
So as soon as we connect the VPN, those drives will be accessible because that remote user is now in the local area network through VPN. So as soon as this is connected, now see on the screen, all the drives are loaded. So now the user has access to his offline drive on the laptop. Can you highlight that offline drive, please? As well as the online drives on the central storage. In this case, it is black box. So now he can work offline, online, both without any problems. So this is, I answered the question, uh, how a remote user can give the data to the central source. So it's a like kind of private cloud. Now coming to the uh, point, how user can access the applications. This is they're accessing the files, how you can access the applications. So for that purpose, you need to have application virtualization solutions. There are multiple application virtualization solutions. You can implement that. Blackbox is also one of the application virtualization solution. We call it AAA access application anywhere. You can just double click on that. And as soon as we double click, whatever applications are to be virtualized like tally or um, ERP, anything, it will be virtually loaded on users remote computer and only keyboard strokes and mouse clicks will be transmitted and the output will be transmitted. So it will be very, very bandwidth frugal and less hardware intensive. So here this tally and ERP is loaded. We just click on it and we can use it. You can also click on ERP or some application software. This application software client is not installed on the user's computer. It is virtually loaded. So application virtualization can solve your problem. Blackbox is also one of the application virtualization. That's why we are seeing its application virtualization. You can use any application virtualization. So this is the ERP you can use. You can go to Tally, please. So now Tally is also open and you can use Tally also. In case you don't want to use this kind of application through the VPN, the user can use these applications in the browser also. Yeah, can we go to the browser? So let's say I'm using MacBook and I want to use Tally on my MacBook. So application virtualization can also happen in the browser. So now we are going to browser, account manager login will happen in the browser. And as soon as we log in, those applications will be loaded in the browser. Right now we are in a browser email, and we are in the internet browser. So if you see all those applications will be loaded over here. And we can click on tally or any application required. You can see Word, Excel, PowerPoint or WPS Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Tally is also now Tally will be loaded in the browser virtually and you can use the user can use Tally virtually on the browser. So application virtualization is a solution when you want to access your applications remotely without taking any risk and cost effectively on bandwidth and on the hardware software cost. So this is how we can access the applications remotely. Yeah, uh, tally is loaded. Let's see. So we are in the browser and if we make it full screen, it will feel like we are just using tally application on our computer. This is for remote user or VPN. Yeah, uh, can you please give back the screen to me? So now we are moving to the next part. Which is BYOD environment. See now your user, if they're using their personal laptop or desktop, many a times that is being used by their kids for their classes by their family members. And you don't want to keep your enterprise applications and enterprise uh, uh, data on the desktop, which is being used by so many people. 
so in byod environment you need a separate partition not partition in the hardware sense separate session or separate profile in that particular laptop such that that user's personal data and enterprise data is segregated in personal profile the user can work whatever way he wants in enterprise profile user can work on enterprise applications user can work on enterprise data and all enterprise policies like usb email vigilance internet controls are applicable so enterprise data is not vulnerable to any data leakage so the design thinking here is dual profiling when you have byod don't worry create another profile on that particular computer system and in that profile load your enterprise data in that profile load your um uh, application data and allow user to use that particular enterprise profile and apply all your dlp policies on that specific profile only instead of entire computer system there are many solutions for that you can even have profiling manually also in case you want to automate it we also have a product called black box duo dual profile system which automatically creates two profiles on that particular computer one profile is applied with all enterprise policies and loaded with enterprise applications and data and vpn and another profile is free flow user can do whatever he wants the only thing is user will not remain the admin of that particular system so this is for the byod environment next is work from home now there could be a company given laptop or there could be um, a byod whatever it is in work from home there are data leakage policies possibilities there are backup challenges there are secured application and file access challenges we have seen so many things now so you can apply all these things together to work from home profile so when you give work from home profile user will access your file server through vpn user will access your applications through um uh, through application virtualization pen drive email email attachments email vigilance internet vigilance internet on demand internet minimum required website kind of internet will be applicable through device hardening and the agent would take the backup of that particular laptop or desktop which is used for work from home so here you are very well taking care of data loss leakage and theft possibilities next problem is productivity monitoring what to do when users are working remotely how do we know that they are productive so there are various solutions like screen capture solutions in the market you can see that black box also builds in such thing so we will see that only uh, can we go to pbo playback office please so here uh, we will log on to this playback office all your remote users screens will be captured and uploaded on the black box when the user is online and we can actually playback what that user was doing last friday between 2 to 4 or yesterday between 2 to 4 or today between 2 to 4 so today's session we'll see so we started this session between 3 to 4 so we'll playback that session for this particular user so here you see um this black screen when we were either on my presentation or uh, on the console and some of the things you know you can see uh, these screens are captured while we were working on this okay, can we show some more yeah this is what we were seeing so whatever is captured is available so in case you smell something fishy you want to uh investigate something no problem you can actually play back and find out what was happening on this particular computer yeah can you give back the screen to me please and now we are going to the last problem which is 13th problem and that is it standardization enforcement of the it policies so normally you require seven to eight different hardware software systems to have perfect it systems or it policies in place it is a domain controller hardware and software client access license for your domain controller file server or nas device file server then storage or nas device endpoint controller firewall system backup system mail system you need nvpn 
so you need multiple hardware to integrate and provide you complete it enforcement or it policy enforcement gone are the days when you have to do this now in the market you find so many solutions which are called it in a box solution single hardware single software solution for multi function so instead of dedicating one hardware for domain controller for file server for mail server for firewall for um endpoint security for backup solution for storage you can opt for all in one kind of solutions it in a box solution single solution which serves as file service mail service backup service endpoint control service vpn service on the same hardware the same software same dashboard and then you can very well control entire it through single device and it is very logical when you don't have to invest in multiple hardware your cost is uh, lower when you don't have to manage multiple software you don't need very high fi tech need you know technical skills to manage it so single hardware single software single hardware makes it cost effective single software makes it very simple so we should look at such it in a box solution of course black box is one of them but you can have look uh, now there are multiple proven it in a box solutions which you can see and you do you can get rid of all these multiple things actually so this is the 13th problem so we have seen all these 13 problems we have seen consequences of these problems and we have seen the solutions how we solve the problems now we will take the question answer session uh, before that i would request prasanna to run a poll uh, by the time you are uh, answering the poll i will read your questions and respond to them yeah so the poll results are out 75% of the attendees believe that autocratic centralization solves the data scatteredness 65% um, agree that active recycle bin is a good solution to recover shift belief and uh, identify deleter 65% uh, you know agree that primary and hidden chamber can recover the ransomware as i told bit locked and version uh, off premise backup can recover the data after the hardware failure 55% of the people uh, agree 65% uh, uh, you know understand that three layered usb policy is a good solution to certain challenges per, uh, related to usb ports 70% people uh, you know agree that email vigilance has to be there 60% people agree that happy hours uh, to provide on demand and restricted internet solves certain problems Uh, playback office uh, is appreciated by 65% the solution about dual profiling is appreciated by 55% and uh, access application anywhere is recognized by 60% of the people to have solved the problem yeah so now we will take the question answers so um, one question is in the chat whether black black box is a document management system or not no black box is not a document management system you can opt for open source or paid document management system there are plenty um 
I'm answering the question from Mr. Uh, Ranganath MS. How many concurrent users can work on application virtualization scenario like Tally? So it is very simple. Uh, actually, there is no limit. Uh, you can uh, design the sizing of the hardware such that uh, it takes care of your peak of concurrent users. So let's say, for example, you have 50 users uh, to work on Tally remotely. Uh, you need 20 kbps up and 20 kbps down bandwidth on every user side and uh, on the server side which is for AAA it does not require server operating system terminal server license or RDP license it does not require all this you just need a good Windows 10 uh, workstation grade computer with a Xeon processor 32 GB RAM and whatever 500 GB hard drive uh, and it can very well take the load. Um, and its response experience for the user. It is very good. Uh, you can connect with us offline in case you want to do the POC, it is very good. Uh, Mr. Rangavi is asking, how many black box solutions do you have? We have only one black box solution, which is uh, the hardware plus software. Either you can put it on premise or on uh, cloud. And there are add-on products like Blackbox AAA, Access Application Anywhere, uh, DCDR for data backup, and Blackbox Duo for dual profiling. So uh, you can refer our website where all the types of uh, Blackbox solutions are available. It is www.blackbox.in or www.signersoft.in. Uh, Mr. Ranganath, we have 400 users. Yeah, uh, I it can be extended, you know, you can connect with us on offline. If you have 400 users, uh, you will need uh, one hardware on which uh, we build two or three virtual, virtual computers. And on each virtual computer, we can install application virtualization software and we can take care of it. It is not a problem at all. Uh, Prasanna, can you please connect with Mr. Ranganath for further technical discussion? Yes, sir. Mr. Vaja is asking if today uh, our one of the department all data like 15 GB affected with ransomware can version backup give all 15 GB data backup as version backup take only working data. Uh, I'm not able to understand this question very well, but let me uh, uh, guess an answer. You know, let's say you have all data like 15 GB, which is affected by ransomware. So if you are using primary chamber, hidden chamber uh, technology, which is in the new generation black box, uh, um, first of all, the data which is not being used frequently will be bit locked. So it will not be affected by ransomware. So there are chances that out of 15 GB, if your working data is 5 GB, 10 GB data will not be affected. And rest of the 5 GB will all be affected by the ransomware. But you will have yesterday's version of that 5 GB of the data, which you can restore and continue your business. So your data loss will be uh, the data modifications done in that 5 GB of the data between the ransomware attack and the versioning of the versioning time of the data. Yeah, for tally use. Prasanna will help you, sir, Mr. Ranganath. Yeah. Now, yeah, any other questions before we conclude today's session? I think in chat, we get a lot of questions. If you can put it on question answers, one moment. Uh, I'm not even, Nadim, uh, Mr. Ansari is asking, how does it save MS Office or Microsoft license cost? Yeah. So see, uh, black box does, uh, does not require a, a, a domain controller, Windows server, client access license, RDP CALS, terminal server license. It does not require. So that saves huge Microsoft licensing cost, but it serves the same purpose of application virtualization or of domain controlling or of device hardening. Pertaining to MS Office, we are not in that business, but we recommend the use of WPS Office, which is very close to MS Office as far as the GUI is concerned and functionality is concerned. So that is how you can save MS Office on your own by using alternative solutions. We use WPS Office and we are quite happy with that particular solution. We are exchanging our files with MS Office users or we are, we are also getting files from MS, MS, uh, MS Office users and there is no problem. Now, what happened if the user um, already copied his uh, data on downloads and then start using happy hours? 
uh, it will not be possible, just a moment. It will not be possible to uh, download the data, uh, to copy the data in download folder. Rajendra, can you please show that please? So now uh, we'll, uh, we will first uh, uh, go to the this PC. Right now we have download folder and enterprise profile. So try to copy the data from download folder to enterprise, to, uh, from enterprise profile to download folder. Try to copy it please. It will not be possible. So uh, user cannot copy data before entering the happy hour. So download folder is always a one way folder uh, in uh, outside of the happy hour. So you can copy data from download folder, but you cannot copy data to the download folder. I hope this is clear. Uh, Mr. Va uh, Mr. Vaja, there is no solution called Embass. Embass is already discontinued. Yeah, Prasanna, we can conclude the session now. Thank you, sir. Thank you for such an enlightening session. Uh, Sudhir, sir, can you please give us your concluding remarks? Yes, Prasanna. Uh, see, th this is uh, very interesting. One thing I have noticed that there are few uh, participants or attendees who are always uh, attending our session. So Vishalji, this is very encouraging and uh, value addition is too good. That's the reason people are spending and uh, spending their time with us. So thank you all the attendees. Uh, your participation gives a lot of encouragement and uh, your questions uh, gives us also new, new things to learn. So thank you to everyone. And we request everyone to keep on participating and uh, encouraging us. Thank you, Vishalji, for this session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And on the 3rd of March, uh, we have organized a demonstration of Black Box by Aditi Kothawala. Uh, so uh, she is our system analyst, and she is going to demonstrate various aspects of Black Box. In case you are interested in seeing that demonstration, please go to the event page of Synersoft and register yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prasanna. Thank you, Sudhirji. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank you.